Does anybody remember that ride? I tell you what, that was a good one. Mm. I think that was back in 91. That's a heck of a ride right there, folks. Well, this is my thought on things here. And this is a true story. And I hope any boy or man out there somewhere thinking about putting a dress on, I hope you take the time to listen to this story. And I uh, hope you get something out of it before you head down that road, because I don't think you're getting the whole truth. And maybe this can help you out before you make any decisions. And this took place. I was about 16, maybe 18 year old. I worked for an old man. We'll talk about him here shortly. But there's a lady that lives right up above me. I'm sitting in my front yard, and I'll show you here just shortly where she lived. And back when I was a little fella, me and my brother, her well would freeze up. And we used to take water for her up there from the house I grew up in. And every time she'd give us a handful of pennies or nickels, just whatever she had, the little lady didn't have much. And she was so small, 70, 75 pounds maybe. Her hide looked so thick. And the wrinkles in her skin was looked like it was half inch deep. Chewed tobacco. She was a fine little lady. Told us one time, said, these little fists may be small, but they sure knock a big knot. <laughs> Hell, she'd bum back her off us, everything else she was a hoot. But over time, I come to love that old woman. And I think she loved me. And over the years, we've done lots of things for her. Moving chickens around, whatever. Traded chickens with her. I used to cut firewood and take to her and trade her firewood for coal. I'll show you. I still got the coal laying over here. And uh, the county wouldn't buy her wood. And the coal burnt the grates up in her wood stove. So she'd trade coal for wood. And I traded with her. I didn't need it really neither. But I traded with her anyhow to make sure she had plenty of wood. And I'm going to show you where she lives here just shortly. But I'm in my front yard and I'm sitting here looking at her house, which you probably won't be able to see it on this thing, but I'll show you where it's at anyhow. But let's get into the story. And the story is true. And I worked for an old man. He's probably in his 60s when I started working for him when I was 16 year old. And uh, worked for him off and on for several years, running around with him. And I don't recall if I was working for him whenever this took place or not, because we still done things together long after I quit working for him. He was a fine man. Had a sixth grade education, I think, for fifth. He's one of the smartest SOBs I've ever known. He fixed doing a he's smart, unbelievably smart. Smart man. But somehow I wound up with him one day. And I uh, met lady up here on the hill I was telling, telling you about. She uh, always went down to a far pig farmer. And every year her daughter would buy three pigs. Well, and the farmer would give her the runt. And every year the runt turned out to be the big, biggest one. Out of the herd every year. One died of a heat stroke one time. We had to get a backhoe, pick it up and carry it over and bury it. Hell, his dang leg tore off. It was so heavy. We had to scoop him in the bucket, tie him in there. I think mean, she could raise a hog now. But anyhow, man, this old pinky, we go up there and cut these pigs. Three of them was uh, boar pigs. Piglets. And I went up there to help him. Of course, I got in a lot and run them down. Held them dang near upside down. He just reached in his pocket there and pulled out an old knife. It was sharp. He just made two little slits on either side of that pig's bag. 
I thought, well, what do you do after this? I've never seen it done before. He just took his dirty old finger. He'd, he'd been working on equipment, fingernails dirty and everything else. He ran down in that sack, hooked it behind that nut, twirled his finger a time or two, yanked that thing out of there, threw it on the ground. Well, we did all three of them pigs that way. And that's what happens. Anybody think you're going to go somewhere and get this magic transformation? These boys and men. You think you're going to go and just automatically turn into a woman? That ain't how it happens. This is how it happens. So I can turn that hog loose. And let me tell you. And let me tell you, he sure was glad to be loose. I call another nut, same thing, slit, twirl, yank, pull through. We went through them three just lickety split. Didn't put nothing on them or nothing. I thought, heck, we don't need to put some slave or something on them. Oh, they'll be all right, Pinky said. Because he'd cut a mini of them, I'm sure. So, next thing you know, we're in a truck of leaving. I was thinking to myself, boy. I don't want this man mad at me. He'd do that that quick. But let me show you. I'm going to show you right here where she lived. And I'm I'm sitting in my front yard. This was a fine old lady right here. Just buy her with me. Okay, I'm sitting in the exact same place I was a second ago. I'm going to raise you up just a little. I don't know how it looks on this camera or not. <clears throat> you can tell where that bridge comes down. kind of looks like a gap, but it comes down into a flat spot. That's where that lady lives. And me and her, we became real close over the years. She is something else now. I wish everybody could have met that woman. She's a real good one. But I'm sitting in my front yard, and that's where she lives. And we'd go up there as boys, and even after we'd grow, check on her, and just... <laughs> Sometimes just go first and see what she's been up to. Okay, I'm going to change her. I'm going to show you this coal. Hell, it's late over here. She's been gone for years. Hell, 20, I don't know how long. To be honest. Can't recall. But this coal's been laying here ever since. I'll show you in just a second. That bone. I'll tell you what, oh boy, you're a scooter. You ain't a snooter, you're a scooter. Bring me that bone. Well, folks, I hope you can see him there. He's guilty. Guilty in third degree again. I, he stays in trouble. I laid them bones up there on the wood pile the other day. He's gonna let them dry for a while. Give his dog a treat. This sucker here, he went up there and he got every one of them things down. I all got them all away from him. He's eating one whole leg, I reckon, up and maybe the other than that piece right there. If I can get the other part, the other dog, so they can enjoy a little. They, this dog right here, Snooter. Snooter. That's Snooter right there. That sucker right there. He pays more trouble than any dog I think I've ever owned. Every time he turns around, he's in some kind of trouble. I want to do with him. He's a bone thief now. You a bone thief, Snooter? Got you red-headed again. I never thought about him getting up on that wood pile and getting them bones. He sure did. What a waste of a dog. What a waste of a bone. Old Snooter dog. Give me that bone. Give me that bone. Come here, Stater. Give me that bone. Yeah. What a stinker. I'm trying to shoot out my son. Pain nice. Well, as you can see, there's a pile of coal. Yeah, I've had it 20, 30 years. I, I don't know how long. No more than that. 
I was probably in my early 20s. Like time I took her to Florida with. So it's laid down, laid here that long. I've moved it a time or two, not from place to place, but not too much. Only it's been laying there at least 15 years. It keeps getting knocked down, but these dogs, they'll get after something, knock it down. I stack it back up. And I burn a piece every now and again. One of the reasons I keep it, though, every time I walk by here, it reminds me of that lady. It makes me think back on her. That's a good thing. Because she was something else, folks. I wish you all could have met her. Old diesel, boy. Damn yellow jacket. Man, I don't mean I swear they always show up. The other jackets. They just like to be at the party, I reckon. Okay, now, folks, let's wrap this thing up. Jack says I gotta get to the other thing. Can't spend all day on here. Back to them three little piglets. Well, they took care of them hogs all summer long. And they fattened them up. They grew, I mean, great big pigs. And they were happy little pigs. They got to wall around the mud and the filth. Take a little mud baths and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Stuff and they fed them cream and milk, and cornbread, and a little bit of everything they fed them. Them hogs got in there and they just slurped it up just like people do TikTok and stuff that China's pushing on TikTok. Same way, them hogs slurped it up. Now people slurping up everything China's got to deal on. Tickety talk, tickety talk. Well, there was three happy little pigs. Till that one day towards fall, she called out in the house. We didn't cover her and help. I went up there. I got in that lot. I pushed them four little piglets. Me and probably had help. I can't really recall who was with me now. Took us three or four hours, <laughs> seemed like, to get them pigs loaded up. Last time I seen them, guess where they head, folks? They'd head off to be slaughtered. Them hogs been took out of gene pool. Mm hmm. Yep. Head off to slaughter, folks. I feel like a lot of people now have been led to slaughter. Basically, in the same way. You may not agree. You're right. I hope if anybody watches this, I hope you get something out of it. And that was the end of the three little piglets. Trans piglets. So they got transported to the slaughterhouse, folks. Think about that. Four or three little piglets. And on the same note, later on in life, I was probably late 30s or mid 30s anyway. I had old mule around him. He never was cut. He didn't even get around to cut me. Same deal. The guy I bought him off of, I was going to cut him for him. But how are we going to do it? Yeah, we put him in a running W. Keep him on the ground, we'll take care of it. So, okay. But he needed cut. There's a difference between an animal and human in that, in that, at that point. That's how you get your good stock, work stock, stuff like that. But anyhow, we put that mule in a running W. And I swear, we pulled in so tight. 
He just stood on top of the lid of a paint can, still couldn't get him over. That thing, he, he wasn't giving it up. So we finally got him down there, thing. Getting cut. I got on his head, holding him down, try to comfort him. And the noise and the look and the grunt that poor mule made, he haunted me this day. Bad folks. There ain't no magic pill. This is what happens. They slit your bag, stick in a dirty finger, give it a yank. That's how this deal works, folks. It's exactly how it works. There ain't no nothing magical, no transformation that takes place. In the, the day, it's a dirty finger, sharp knife. Hey, we're mowing over here. I hope you can hear me. Give me a fire. Huh? <laughs> oh, folks. Poor little story. I hope it's a lot in space. I don't think people can poke the curtain. There ain't, ain't nobody to create some nature, baby. At the end of the day, you still won't be a female. You won't be a woman. You're not going to be a girl. But guess what? You're going to be a man, neither. Look through history. history. Look why certain groups of people want to do things like this to another group of people. Look back in history. There ain't never no good reason. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, a few years later, after that mule incident, <laughs> I sold a little stud horse I'd had for years to a friend of mine. Well, they got to want to get it cut. So my friend, they brought that little stud horse I sold back up here to the house. So we, us boys, they have always, bunch of us boys hanging around here bucking bulls and breaking horses and whatever. Anyhow, they brought that little stud horse up here and they called a vet. Get up here and give us a horse. You know, get him cut. And that's what it's called, folks. It ain't called transformation. It's called getting cut. People are lying to you. That shows up. I gotta say, there's four or five of us boys hanging around up and around the barn. And they showed up. Two pretty good looking vets. One about our age, and then the younger ones are pupil or helper, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, of course, all these boys are joking around trying to flirt with them. Huh, they wouldn't have none of that. They had our business. They give that old horse a shot. That's a jury. We all got hold of him. Helped get him down on the ground. Same thing I got on that horse's head trying to comfort him. He drugged up, hired a cat. They went working on him, cutting him. Folks, like I say, that's what it is. It's cut. It ain't transformed. It's cut. Of course, all, everybody, all them boys still trying to flirt around with them. Uh, one of them boys said something. She got that old nut out of that stud horse. That old dog, then, an Australian shepherd. Curly dog. Boy, she's one of my favorites. She, I hauled her to rodeo after rodeo. Everywhere I went, she went with me. She was a real dog. Anyhow, she pulled that first big nut out of there. That poor horse. He might have been drugged up, but he wasn't enjoying it. So. They ride her back, tossed that thing over that dog, and said, Here you go. Are you a good treat? <laughs> All them boys that were flirting. That gal, they quit. <laughs> But nobody flirting no more. He got serious. So 
but they got that other one out. Threw it over towards that old dog just the same. They loaded up their stuff. I only reckon they ever cracked a smile. They, I ain't sure I think I'm gonna be able to enjoy that. I can't prove So if you got this kind of crap here on your mind, If you're letting somebody influence you, try to lead you down this road. If you watch tickety talk or whatever, Chinese pushing, they ain't pushing on their own kids. But think about this, folks. There's a reason they're trying to get you out of the gym. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. They know they can take you out. They accomplish something. Just think about it. Don't be laying down this road like a sheep or a hog to the slaughterhouse. But at the end of the day, that's what they're trying to do. Trying to lead you down to the slaughterhouse. Folks, I hope this helps somebody. If it changes one person's mind. You're going down this road. I hope you'll let me know in the comments. And I do. I, I hope it changes somebody's mind. Maybe it'll help somebody make a different decision. But at the end of the day, this is it. Remember this, at the end of the day, no matter what, it's a sharp knife, two slits, dirty finger, a twirl, and a yank. That's the truth of it. Hey, this ain't a transformer movie. Nope. It's being cut, folks. Hmm. I hope this helps somebody. Maybe a parent, maybe a kid, maybe a grown man been misled. You've been misled. They're loading you up in that truck. Hoping you can run up that ramp and be right in that slaughterhouse. Don't let them do that much. Don't, don't fall. We know China pushing this crap on kids. And I know it ain't just TikTok. Tickety tickety top. It pisses me off, people. Like I said, I hope this helps somebody. Good. I don't know what else to say. Okay, sir.
away from it. Get away from old Snooter. Right, Snooter. Get him, Jack. Snooter. Right here, Snoot. Come here, Snoot. <laughs> Give me that bone. Snooter. Right here, buddy. <laughs> 